Hello students, hope you all are fine and safe at home. Today we will continue the same chapter, Components of Food. First of all, let us understand about balanced diet. In this, the term diet, what does it mean? Yes, here is the definition, the food which we eat daily is known as diet. Here is a picture, you can see the food which we consume daily, it is shown over here. Next, what is balanced diet? Yes, the diet which contains adequate amount of all the nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals and that too is sufficient for normal growth and development of the body. It is called balanced diet. Okay, students, whatever food we are consuming, it should contain carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals in proper proportion. A balanced diet should also contain sufficient amount of water and roughage. A balanced diet should contain enough of food item for, from each of the following. The diet which we are eating daily, it should contain all this food item in a sufficient amount. Here you can see cereals which includes wheat, rice, potatoes which provide carbohydrate to us which gives us energy to do work. Next, we are having butter, ghee, and oil, which provide us fats. Next, we can see which is pulses, dal, pulses, which is dal, peas, milk, cheese, fish, etc. It provides us with protein. Next, vegetables and fruits. These are also very important because it provides us with vitamins, minerals, and roughage. And lastly, the water, which is the most important component of balanced diet. So our balanced diet should contain all these food items in a proper proportion. Here we can see the pie chart. It is showing you the different percentage of different different nutrients which our food should contain. But students, there is one thing that balanced diet, it depends upon the age of the people and occupation of the person. For example, two examples are over here. First is dependence of diet on age. Here you can see the diet of growing child should contain more of protein rich food than the diet of grown up man. Because why? Growing child also need more of minerals phosphorus for formation of bones. Yes, the child who is growing is at the growing stage. He or she needs more and more of protein rich food which is rich in minerals, phosphorus, which will, phosphorus, which will make their bones strong. That is why the, the children, grown up, growing up children, they should take more of protein rich. Next, dependence of diet on occupation. A, the balanced diet of a man doing hard physical work is different from another man doing normal work. Yes, student. The person who is doing hard physical work, he needs more and more of carbohydrate rich food than the person who is doing the normal work. Okay, that's so the diet of a person doing like laborer or carpenter, their diet differs from the person who is doing normal work like sitting in the office and doing the job. You know student, you all know that most of the raw food material is not fit for eating as such. So what do we do in order to make it tasty, in order to so that uh, in order to make it tasty and in order to so in order that it can be digested quickly, we what we do we we follow something like uh, some of the foods we cook like overcooking of the food, some of the foods we peel and eat, some of the vegetables we peel and eat. So what happened while doing these all activity, the nutrients of the foods they get destroyed. So there are certain steps that is pre-cooking practices which should be avoided. Such as first one, repeated washing of rice and pulses. Yes, repeated washing of rice and pulses, what happened? It leads to loss of the nutrients from it. Second is washing of fruits and vegetables after they have been peeled and cut. Fruits and vegetables, before cutting it or before peeling it, we should wash. 
But after peeling and after cutting, we should not lose food. It also means loss of nutrients, the overcooking of food. We have seen that we overcook the food. Like uh, we are just uh, to make it more tasty, to make it more crunchy, crispy. We just over overcook the food. What happened to the? What happened to here? The nutrients get lost. Now, use of excess water while cooking. This is also one of the most harmful factors which leads to loss of nutrient. That is use of excess of water while cooking. We should use sufficient amount of water. How much water is required for cooking that much water? These are the certain steps which we should avoid for cooking. Now, coming to the three terms that is obesity, malnutrition, and undernutrition. What is obesity? Yes, obesity means having much more weight than the normal due to overeating. Here you can see the picture of an obese child. Obesity hub means you, you could have seen that the person who are obese, they should they are more inclined toward the diet which is rich in fats. So what happened ultimately? They it leads to obesity. Next is malnutrition. A person consuming sufficient amount of food but with fewer nutrients. You have seen a person consuming food. They are getting sufficient amount of food which is enough to fill their stomach. But this food does not contain essential nutrient. That is why the, the, the child or the person suffer from malnutrition. Next is undernutrition. If a person is not getting sufficient amount of food as per the requirement, then they will suffer from undernutrition. This we can see. Uh, this we can undernutrition, we can see that where the availability of food is not there. There we can find such things. People, they are not getting enough food, visualize them to put their stomach. So, these kind of area. Poverty. Poverty is also one of the major reasons behind undernutrition. Come to the next slide, that is deficiency diseases. A disease which, la which occurs largely due to deficiency of one or more nutrients, that is carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals and vitamins in the diet, over a long period of time is called deficiency diseases. Okay. First one in this is squash curve. If a child does not get enough protein for a long period of time, then he suffers from protein deficiency called squash curve. Here the symptoms of this are stunted growth, this growth retarded, means he is not able to grow, his body is not able to grow, swelling of face and limbs, swelling of face and limbs and discoloration of hairs, hairs become discolored, thinning of legs, legs become lean and thin, protruding belly, the stop, protruding belly, this. These are the symptoms of deficiency disease which is caused due to deficiency of protein. Next is marasmus. A disease which is caused due to deficiency of both carbohydrate and protein in the diet for a long period. Yes, this is also caused due to deficiency of nutrient which includes carbohydrates and protein both in the diet for longer period. What are the symptoms of this disease? The child becomes very lean and thin. Very lean and thin. Secondly, the growth of child stops completely. The child will not be growing at all. Next is the child cannot move due to lack of energy. Since the child is not getting enough of carbohydrates and protein, carbohydrate there is not getting energy and protein, which is which is a very much requirement for growth. Since they are not getting uh, this uh, carbohydrate and protein rich diet, so what happens? The child is not child is not having energy even to move. Next is the bone of child shown through the skin. You can see here the bone. Here you can see the bone of child which can be counted very well. So these are the symptoms of marasmus. It's also one of the deficiency disease which is caused due to deficiency of carbohydrate and protein in the diet over the longer period of time. Now factors responsible for good health. Till now we have studied about the deficiencies of Deficiency diseases, what all diseases were there, deficiency of which vitamins causes what, these all things we are all ready in earlier slides. 
Now here, what are the factors responsible for good health? Here children, they are just running and enjoying. So they are the healthy children. What are the factors? These are the first and foremost, a child should get balanced diet. Secondly, cleanliness of house and surroundings. This is also one of the major factors for good health. Third is personal hygiene. Means you should keep yourself neat, clean and your surroundings also clean. Next is cleanliness of the food. Yes, the food which we are eating should also be clean. It should be also clean. It should not be unhygienic. Next, exercises and physical activity. Exercise and physical activity, it is very much required, required to stay fit and healthy. And next is vaccination. Yes, time to time, getting vaccination of the disease which are occurring, which is there in the environment for time to time, the vaccination should be taken. So these are the factors of good health. This was all about your chapter, student. If you have any problem, you can ask through parents. Thank you. Soon I will be uploading the video of new chapter. Thank you, students.